Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Say, welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour, Father's Heavenly Word. You know, how strengthening, strengthening it is to hear the Father's Word, especially in this generation of the fig tree. Letting us know what's going to befall us in especially these end times, these years that consummate the end of this age, which as it was promised, uh, would come to pass. We're, we're in the eighth chapter of the book of Isaiah, Yahweh's salvation. That's how you find salvation is through the Father. And the two brothers were, they were at war. That's to say the house of Israel and the house of Judah. That, that's a civil war when that happens. But the sad part was is one of the brothers picked up a foreigner, that's to say Syria, and was going to even appoint after defeating Judah, a foreign king. And God said, I'm going to give you a sign. A virgin is going to conceive, and he's going to be king. King of kings and Lord of lords. In other words, God's promise, I'll establish the king. But this lets us know our Father is not happy with the way man operates. Man uh, when, when brother turns against brother, that goes against everything from both the Old and the New Testament. And especially when you bring in an outsider to, to take sides. Our father was not happy about it. That's why he said, I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you a sign. And you're going to call him Emmanuel, which is to say God with us. And then in the last verse we completed in the last lecture, verse 10, uh, it is there translated rather than transliterated, God is with us. What's the point? If God is with you, who can be against you? It doesn't matter. It's always important that you stay with the Father. That brings His blessings. That brings His leadership. That brings success, knowledge, wisdom, and protection. So um, you kind of have to get it through your head. Don't go against God. That's, that, that gives you a very tough life when you do that. So having said that, with our Father giving us a stern message here in this 8th chapter, let's pick it up with the 11th verse, with a word of wisdom from our Father and verse, chapter 8, verse 11, that word of wisdom in Yeshua's name, and it reads, For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand. I mean, He was stern. There was... Uh, in the strongest terms he spoke to me and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, oh, how were they walking? Verse 12, say ye not a confederacy. That's one worldism. To all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Why? Because God will take care of you. You don't have to be afraid of them as long as God is with you. That's the meaning of Emmanuel, God with us. Verse 13, sanctify the Lord of hosts himself. You pay attention to the Lord God Almighty himself. And let him be your fear and let him be your dread. In other words, um, stay true to the Heavenly Father and he'll take care of the others. You don't have to worry about people of the world. God will line it up. God will take care of it. It's going down exactly as it's written. Have you ever read it? That's the question. Verse 14. And he shall be for a sanctuary. That's to say a place of safety. But for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel for a gin and for a snare, those are two traps, a gin and a snare, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. In other words, um, this lets you know uh, if, if you're going to follow 
the ways of, of uh, the people that like to be lied to and misled, Christ is going to cause you to stumble. Well, why would he do that? Because you're not going to be taught about the false Christ, whereby if you studied God's word and stuck with him rather than the lies of man, you wouldn't be deceived. But if you listen to the ways of the world, Christ can become a stumbling block because there's going to be a false Christ. God teaches it over and over. Next verse, 15, And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be sneered and be taken. Why? Well, take Matthew 24. How many preachers have you heard say, Oh, praise God, I want to be the first one taken. Do you know who the, I mean, a child can read Matthew 24 and know that the first one taken is taken by the false Christ. Why? Because they don't study God's word chapter by chapter and verse by verse. You can end up, your Christianity can even cause you to stumble. Why? Well, if you end up in the sack worshiping Satan as the false Christ rather than the true Christ, well, I'd never heard tell. Well, then you better get into your Father's word. And I would say that in the sternest of ways. And you'd better get into the truth. And that way you will never stumble over Christ. But you'll certainly stumble if you're deceived by the lies of man. And you don't have to understand Revelation. You're going to be gone. That's not true. And that will lead you right to the pits of hell. And it will cause you to stumble the very word of God if you're not careful. Why? Because you're listening to man and not chapter by chapter and verse by verse what our Heavenly Father has to say. That's what he's warning about here. Christ can become a stumbling block if you're not familiar with Father's Word. It can become a trap and a snare for you because of the lies of Satan. 16. Bind up the testimony, seal the law among the disciples. You seal the law among those two that I told you would come. That's to say those two children, if you would. The one from the prophet that God named called him Meher Shalaz Hazbaz, which is to say, make haste to the spoil and speedy to the prey. The Assyrian is coming. That's the false Christ. That's his type. And God wants to make that very clear. So you bind up the testimony and seal the law among my disciples. Do you know what a disciple is? That's a student of God's word, not man's word, God's word. Verse 17, And I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Um, he's, he's your only hope. That's why you want to really pay attention to him. Why does he hide his face? He doesn't really. It's just that people go astray. They would rather listen to a bunch of malarkey and nonsense, especially in this generation. The, 12, the, the missing years of Jesus Christ, it is, it is so well recorded and yet people play guessing games with it. The actual birth date of Christ is written and logged in in the Word of God and yet people play games with it. It's amazing. Amazing. Be a student. When the word Jacob is utilized, it means all the natural seed. That's both brothers, okay? Verse 18, Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. Well, which children is he talking about? Well, he, he's, talk, he's talking about Meher Shalaz Hazbaz. He said, I'll give you a sign. Who was the other sign? Both of them named by God. The mother didn't name that child. The father didn't name that child. God named that child. God also named that child of the virgin that would conceive and called him Emmanuel. God with us. And both of those children are for signs so that you would know as well as Isaiah that the word of God is true. Verse 19. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits 
and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God? Should you not ask the real truth from Almighty God rather than, than a bunch of peepers, mutters, and chirpers? For the living to the dead. In other words, Almighty God is our way. Almighty God is the door. Why in the world would you go to a bunch of familiar spirits? Those are evil spirits, lost souls. What do you expect to gain from a lost spirit? All that we will bring you is confusion. And people that chirp, 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 I mean, make up their own rules and regulations and say, thus saith the Lord, and the Lord didn't speak to them. Okay. Hey, there's a lot of that goes on in the name of religion, my friend. People have bad dreams and eat sour pickles and wake up with a new message. It didn't come from God. It came from sour pickles, familiar spirits, chirpers and murderers, murmurers rather, that will lead you astray. And to be led away from Almighty God is flirting with a one-way trip to hell. It's bad. It's dangerous. That's why Christ can become a stumbling block as forewarned in verse 14. Verse 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. If they don't give God's word chapter by chapter and verse by verse, this word, the word of God, then there's no light there. You need to look for it. Friend, they will mislead you. Just like I forementioned, I would be the first one taken from the field and a child can read Matthew 24 or Mark 13 and know that Antichrist takes the first one. It shows ignorance. That is to say to be void of the truth and misled, misguided. This word brings light. This word shadows out the darkness whereby you can see truth. This word brings you to your heavenly Father. Emmanuel, God with us, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. It does not become a stumbling block, but a guiding light for protection, for safety, your sanctuary. Verse 21, And they shall pass through it, hardly bestead, and, uh, what, uh, and hungry. I mean, a, a hard, hard case. That's what it means. And it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves and curse their king and their God and look upward. Like, where did we go wrong? Well, you go wrong by not listening to this word, the word of Almighty God. You start listening to the peepers and the familiar spirits. I had a message from God today. He gave us this message long ago, and it's not any different today than it was then both in the, the apostles, the, the prophets. God is the same yesterday. He is today, and He will be forever. The question is, have you ever read it? Do you know the Word of God? Verse 22, And they shall look unto the earth, and behold trouble and darkness, dimness of anguish, and they shall be driven to darkness, um, and um, they're going to believe a lie. That's what it means. When you believe in, when you're dr driven to darkness, it means you begin to believe in false teachings until you wrap yourself up in it, thinking you're perfectly all right. But if it isn't this word, you're in a heap of hurt, and the stumbling block can have been taking you in. That is to say, your love for Christ can lead you to the Antichrist if you listen to the traditions of man. And if you listen to, even if you would, the voice of the Assyrian that's approaching, the Assyrian being a type of Antichrist. When we get to the 14th chapter, we'll nail this. But God is preparing you that there's deception in the world. And as he stated back in the verse 13, um, where he said, sanctify the Lord of hosts himself. Go with him. Believe him. Understand him. He foretells us all things in his word 
whereby there should never be any anxiety. Chapter 9, verse 1. Nevertheless, in other words, same time, same place, continuing. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation. When at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nations. Um, now, uh, naturally, if you have seen our uh, documentary on Poland and Norway, which is to say Zebulun and uh, Naphtali, with the uh, Zebulun meaning a habitation and Naphtali a uh, wrestling, and so it is that people wrestle in their habitations with the truth if they're not careful. If you don't take sanctuary in Emmanuel, which is to say God with us. Uh, verse 2. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light that they dwell in the land of the shadow of death. Upon them hath the light shined. And of course that light is Jesus Christ himself, Emmanuel, God with us. He promised it would take place. He promised us the Son. When, when he said, let us create man in our image, he included himself. That's why he can rightfully forename Emmanuel, God with us, because God is with us through him. Verse 3, Thou hast multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy in harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. Now, there, there is an error in that verse, and I, I cannot let it go. Many times I will cover over, but I cannot let this one go. You with companion Bibles, you will have uh, what I'm about to say drawn out for you. The word nation and not is a word that they split. It's hegelo, okay? Lo in the Hebrew tongue means no or not, okay? And... And it should have been one word, and it should have been exaltation rather than nation and not. Okay, you got it? So let's, let's read it, Hegelo, as it's supposed to be read, and then it makes sense. Okay, verse 3, I re reread in the correct way. Thou hast multiplied the exhortation and increased the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy in harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. And there you have the statement as it is written. Verse 4, For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. That is to say, as old Gideon would do it. I mean, brought her down good. Our Father's in control. That's why you always want to ride with Him. You always want to stay in the Word and, and the correct Word. Verse 5, For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel for fire. Why? Because God is a consuming fire. Do you understand that? Our Heavenly Father is a consuming fire. If you are against Him, if you love Him, that same consuming fire is the Holy Spirit that protects us, guides us, directs us, blesses us. Verse 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. That's politics, the whole bit, all the government. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And that is our Savior. That is Emmanuel. That is God with us. King of kings and Lord of lords. He heads the church and he heads the government. Ultimately, like it or lump it, you that 
that uh, believe that politics are not mentioned in God's Word, they certainly are. For there is one party that is supreme and always wins, and that's God's party. God's party always has the victory. Why? Because they serve Him. And His government, His nation, is ultimate. For He is everywhere and He is everyone's Father. And those that worship Him will be with Him. Those that do not, they're not going to be here. For there is only one Prince of Peace. And when you follow Him, you find peace of mind. That's why you want to obey Him. You want to follow Him. And why would they call Him a counselor? Because He counsels us. He counsels us with straight truth and message that keeps you out of trouble, that strengthens you, that makes you successful. But you've got to listen to Him. You can't play church. Christianity is not a religion. It's a reality. He is the Prince of Peace. And the government shall be upon His shoulder, always has been, always will be in that uh, ultimate. Verse 7 to continue. Of the increase of His government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon His kingdom to order it, and to establish it with judgment, with what is right, and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. You can count on it. Hey, friend, it's already happened, really. I mean, when you look at the current events of the end times, and you see the nations aligning as they cry, Confederacy, Confederacy, then you begin to see the consummation of the end of this age. And the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is coming. And He's coming back this time, not as a babe to be crucified, but He's coming back as Emmanuel, God with us to rule with a rod of iron, a consuming fire. And yet at the same time, Prince of Peace, the only peace there is, the only peace of mind you can find in your lifetime is through Him, in Him, and by Him. Verse, continue, next verse, verse 8. The Lord sent a word unto Jacob, and it hath lighted upon Israel. It's this word, the word Emmanuel. Verse 9, and all the people shall know, even Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, that's the ten tribes and their capital to the north, and say in the pride and stoutness of heart, and they say in the pride and the stoutness of heart, verse 10, the bricks are fallen down, but we will build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. You want to be careful here. You want to make sure it's not the old, that you have the true cedar of Lebanon, not, not a cedar that might be spoken of in Revelation chapter, I'm sorry, in uh, Isaiah chapter 14 here in a little bit. You know, in, God makes it very clear to us concerning the play on this word cedars, which is, that's the tree of our people. In Ezekiel chapter 31, uh, the word Asher is utilized there, but Asher has no ob article. Therefore, it's not translated Asher. It's translated Tiasha, which means an old salt cedar. Now listen to me carefully. It means salt cedar. What it is, Satan claims to be a great cedar of Lebanon, and he's nothing but a plain old box salt cedar scrawny, willowy, not fit for anything, basically. And that's what the play on words is here. And again, by the time we get to chapter 14, you will better understand, for our Father will explain in detail. Verse 11, Therefore the Lord shall set up the adversaries of Rezin against him, 
and join his enemies together. Remember who Rezin is? You should. He's the king of Syria. And the Assyrian is coming. Okay. But this man's going to have problems. Verse 12. The Syrians before and the Philistines behind. And they shall devour Israel with open mouth. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. He's still angry. You know, our father, he kind of gets put out at people that won't listen to him. And let me ask you a question. If he himself came down to this earth as Emmanuel, God with us, to show us how to get it done, to show us how, how to cut it, okay, to accomplish what he did without a whimper, without one word of complaint, giving us that example, and then knowing people are not going to listen, it upsets him. He's not happy. And when, when the Assyrian comes, why will he not be happy then? Because the Assyrian, most of them will think ultimately it is Christ himself. But why? They're unlearned. They haven't read the word. They haven't seen the light. They think they have, but they've only seen enough to stumble if they're not very careful. That's why God is still angry. Verse 13, For the people turneth not unto him that smiteth them, neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. They still want to listen to the lies of man. And they will go away from our Father. They will find better things to do, and they will be deceived by that Assyrian. You will see that come to pass. Verse 14, Therefore the Lord will cut off from Israel head and tail, and branch and bush, branches the top and bushes the bottom, from top to bottom, in one day. And it's going to happen that uh, the days of the Lord is coming, and the Lord will have His way with them. Verse 15, the ancient and honorable, He is the head, and the prophet that teacheth lies, He's the tail. In other words, these people that uh, claim to be honorable and are not, and that claim that they're teachers and all they teach is a bunch of lies, things that they say, God told me this and God never talked to them, they're going to be cut off. And they should be. Anytime someone lies and deceives God's children, that's a very serious crime in God's eyes, and God will even that score. God will see to it. Verse 16, for the leaders, now I like to translate this flatterers, they like to build you up. For the flatterers of this people cause them to err, to stray, to go astray. And they that are led of them are destroyed. They're swallowed up, and they're gonna be. friend. This is not a pretty thing, but if you see the real truth and you see how people are being misled today, example, you don't have to understand the book of Revelation. You're going to be gone. That's a lie. I mean, it is a bald-faced lie that will cause people to stumble if they're not very careful. What, the very word revelation means to reveal and to uncover, and God so named it so that you would know that the book is uncovered to you if you'll simply study it, for it is the Word of God. You're a child of God. You should understand it. You should understand the teachings of your own Father if you'll take the time, if you'll pray about it, and if you'll ask His guidance. Because the false teachers and lies and false prophets, they're going down the tube, friend. God will not tolerate it. He doesn't like people that play church. He wants the real thing. He wants you. And He wants you to study that word, to understand that word. And most of all, follow who? Follow Him. Not some nonsense. 
Not some man, not this man or any other man, but follow your Father. Do you know something? As he said in the 13th verse of the last chapter, sanctify the Lord of hosts himself and let him be your fear. That's to say your reverence, your love. Let him be your protection. For he is your protection and he will always protect you. He will always lead you. He will always guide you. The people that mislead you or will lead people astray, they're short-lived in this earth age for their day is coming. And they chalk themselves out right out the bottom. God does not appreciate people that mislead his children, especially if they do it for, for gain's sake rather than love of truth, of the word, of saving souls, of drawing people away from the fire of destruction and not letting the lies swallow them up but leading them back to truth, the truth of God's word, the truth of this age. Okay, we'll go one more verse here, and we find it in verse 17. Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall have mercy on their fatherless and widows. For every one is an hypocrite and an evildoer, and every mouth speaketh folly. Not truth, folly. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. He's still unhappy. He's an unhappy camper. Why? It's so easy to love him. And listen to me. As it's written in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4, your soul belongs to him. And your soul is his to do with as he chooses. Now, if he's unhappy with you, Guess what he's going to do with your soul? Do you think he wants you among people that have really strived chapter by chapter, verse by verse, wanted to learn the word and do what's right? Do you think he wants you in that congregation? Of course not. He wants you gone. And unfortunately, that's where you will be. What, what a terrible state that would be to be cut off because you dreamed a dream of fantasy rather than sticking with God's word. You listen to chirpers and peepers instead of Almighty God, His word, chapter by chapter and verse by verse. Don't miss the next lecture. All right, bless your hearts. Listen a moment, won't you please? The Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers were chip implanted under your skin. It is getting light in the game. You need to know what the mark of the beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13 verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13 23, behold I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's word concerning this critical subject, the mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of The Mark of the Beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan. And there we are back again. Let's have the 800 number, please. 1-800-643-4645. That number is good from Puerto Rico, throughout the U.S., Alaska, Hawaii. Hey, all over Canada, spirit moves, you got a question, share it. Won't you do that? Please never ask a question about a particular individual, religion, or organization. Let's don't judge people. It's not our place to judge. God is judge. We simply teach and follow and love Him. That's what's important. Those of you that listen by shortwave around the world, uh, our, uh, it's always good to hear from you and your announcer at the end of the hour will give you our mailing address. Uh, again, always a pleasure. Now, you got, a, you got a prayer request? You don't need that number. You don't need an address. You know why? Because God knows what you're thinking. He loves you. May not love what you do always, but He does love you. That's why He created your soul. So. 
What does he want from you? Hosea 6.6. 6. He doesn't want your burnt offerings. He wants your love. He wants you to love him the way he loves you. Father, around the globe we come. We ask that you lead, guide, direct, Father. Touch in Yeshua's precious name. Amen. Okay, and we'll get into some questions here. We're going to take Jessica from Arkansas. Um, I have some. I have a question. Many preachers have told me that it's a sin for a woman to wear makeup. Uh, I, I have also had preachers to tell me it's a sin to have a Christmas tree in my home. Could you please give a correct answer to these questions? I'd be happy to. Unfortunately, let's take the Christmas tree first. Many people take Jeremiah chapter 10 where they actually go out and whittle out an idol and bring it in their home and worship it. You don't worship a tree. Okay. And as it's written in the last chapter of Hosea, that means salvation, the way to salvation. God says, I am a great fir tree, meaning an evergreen. It's symbolic of our Father. But don't worship it. Worship the Father. That's what's important. Now, back to makeup. The reason that you are not to paint yourself, it was to paint yourself as a harlot. In the old times, it meant this is, I'm, it was like a signboard, like I am a harlot and I am available. Okay. But um, uh, everything in moderation, makeup in moderation is, is um, a fantastic, it's, it's fine. There's no problem with it, okay? Only when you begin to worship something or you let something come between you and God does it become wrong. Uh, to sin is to transgress the law. Those things that I've before mentioned do not transgress the law. Gloria from Florida. 2 Timothy 3.1 is clear to the ears of those that can spiritually and are obedient here and are obedient, children of God. And I see it's my own children. Well, listen, just continue, you know, rightly dividing the word of God. You as the mother, you keep doing what's right regardless of what they may do, the children. They'll come back to it, okay, most likely. But when, when they won't listen, you simply set the record straight by living what is right. And that example is always there for them, okay? And, and they'll, they'll, um, they have to respect that. Marvin from Washington. What does Ecclesiastes 11.1 1 mean when it says, Cast thy bread upon the waters for... There, there, they shall, you shall find it after many days. Well, it means exactly that. Whatever, let's, let's classify the bread as truth and good deeds. And when you perform them, it's going to come back to you. That's just, that's just nature. A person basically writes their own, um, their own ticket through life. If you are mean to your neighbors, guess what? They're going to be mean back to you, most likely. Why? Because they won't put up with it. If you are good to your neighbors, they will be good to you, most likely. It is their chapel family impossible to get along with, and you that can't be helped. It just happens. But all in all, no problem to to cast your breads upon the waters, people, and it'll come back to you sooner or later. Uh, Shirley from Georgia, two women came to the door trying to give me their books. When I wouldn't take them, they started telling me how Jesus set up his kingdom in heaven in 1914. I told them that is not what my Bible says. Well, good for you. And that he will set up his kingdom on earth. They also said that we can't see Jesus or God. And I told them that we can then because we're, we'll be in spiritual bodies. We'll be in the same dimension. You got it right. That's good. Always be nice to people, regardless. Um, they mean well, no doubt. Oh, Polly from Nebraska. How is it that Abraham was the first Messiah? He wasn't. He was a type, if you want to call it that. Okay, But he was not Messiah. He was a type. He was Abraham in the Hebrew tongue means the father of many nations, or many nations would be blessed by him. And so they are. Okay, Why? Because Christ would come through him. I enjoy your explanations and reading of the Bible very much. Well, thank you, Polly. But uh, 
there are, God uses types to bring forth the truth in many cases, and that's how we learn. And um, uh, B.J. from Kentucky, B.J., God always, God is a God of forgiveness. As a matter of fact, God demands forgiveness. So don't, don't put yourself on some guilt trip and know that on repentance, God can take care of things. Even if it's someone that's passed on somewhere else, he can still take care of it. Why? They're with him. And no, nothing is impossible. Many things are impossible for man, but nothing is impossible for our Father. Talk to him, okay? Brandy from Idaho. My family follows the health laws, and I'm frequently asked questions concerning our diet. What do you say to someone who says that a chicken is a scavenger and will eat anything? I've done such some research and learned that they will eat li lizards or mice if given a chance. Well, um, basically, they're going to eat locusts, okay, uh, if, you, if they're just out in the wild. That's grasshoppers to, to southern people. Uh, and that's clean food. But who did God send along with manna for the children to eat in the wilderness? Quail. It's the same family, okay? So quails, uh, scab they, they, they um, kind of hunt grain and, and uh, locusts and whatever they can find. And uh, they're good eating, okay? So naturally, uh, anything can corrupt itself if it gets a chance. The thing is, don't give it the chance. Randy from Florida, what do you think about the Supreme Court taking the case, taking on the case about gun ownership? Well, I, I like it, and I think that because of our Constitution, that um, it should be upheld. And of course, if I remember right, and I, could, I may stand corrected, no, I'll say it, I believe the party that has filed this case is in the Washington, D.C. area where per people are not allowed to own guns unless you're a crook. Okay, and crooks can, crooks are allowed to have guns because they just get them, okay? And they're going to break into people's homes knowing that an honest person is not going to have a gun. And they can have their way with the people. So if the Supreme Court does the right thing, that will change in big time, okay? Hopefully. And I really, I really believe this court will change it. I mean, it, we have the right to bear on, own and bear arms and uh, always have had and um, hopefully always will have. Ed from Connecticut. I have two questions, please. You speak of sp the spirit of slumber. Where is that mentioned? And in how many places is it mentioned? Well, let's go to the prime place. It's, uh, it's Romans chapter 11 where God sent the spirit of, it says the spirit of slumber. The Greek is stupor, okay? They're awake. They're not asleep. They're awake, but they're in a stupor. Uh, they don't know what's going on. They're lost. They don't know up from down hardly. Okay, and but God sends that spirit of stupor so that they're innocent. Okay, that's one of the reasons. The millennium will take care of it. You say the phrase "our people" and the oil of our people, and who and what group does our people refer to? Believers. Believers everywhere. Um, this would be Yogesh from Georgia. Are there different levels of pain for those that are on the wrong side of the gulf? For example, the rich man mentioned in Luke 16, 19, and 24 was cruel and unjust to Lazarus in his torment, as mentioned in verse 24. Is it the same as a righteous man who tries to please God but was not taught the truth? Well. You, you got to understand that this God isn't uh, exerting this pain upon them. Uh, the rich man, God didn't put the pain and torment on him. He put it on himself. Well, how did he do that? By how he lived here. His torment is the fact that here, he's the rich man. And he didn't make it. I mean, here, here that beggar is over there in, in the bosom of Abraham. That means being loved by Abraham, uh, protected by Abraham, right there at the altar of Almighty God. And the angels uh, helping him, everybody taking care of him, and here he sits over here a nothing. Okay. 
and that torments him. But he brought it on himself. So naturally, the degree of torment is brought on by each individual, not God. God is not somebody that gets up every morning and says, Who am I going to zap today? I'd just like to cause a little pain. No, that, the only way our Father zaps, or He hopes to teach and lead them through it, that they will hear. Okay? But He does correct. Why? Because that's love. That's tough love. But we bring our own, the, whoever's on the wrong side, to whatever degree they torture themselves because they didn't make it is the only torture they're going to find there. No torture exerted by Almighty God. Larry from, um, I'm not, I can't, I'm going to say maybe that's Florida, Larry. I don't know. I have a comment and then a question. I would like to say that I truly believe you are a great, a great man of God. You're teaching, well, thank you. Um, let me get down to your question. Um, okay, Second uh, uh, Corinthians chapter five verse eight. Pastor, is it possible not to return back to God and become a ghost? No, there's no spooks. Okay, there's a few evil spirits, but Second um, uh, Corinthians five eight to be absent from this body is present with God, and the only way you could even as as your evil spirit is if God allowed it. Okay. But for every negative, there is a positive, and we know that there are evil spirits in the world, and, but the person, the entity cannot be in the world, only his spirit. Bill from Oklahoma. At the end of the millennium, Satan is to be released for a short season, a short time. How uh, he goes out to gather the nations to fight against Christ. My question is, are there nations, are these nations flesh and blood or spirit? They're spirit. At the last trump, all are changed. Now, this is not uh, Gog and Magog, that is, as it is mentioned in Revelation 20. It simply means those that will still follow Satan and gather to him. And they're not even going to make a splash, and we're not going to have to do anything. God himself is going to destroy them, and he's going to make quick work out of it, okay? They are not flesh. That's why they're spiritual bodies. But God, can, this is why you have Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Fear not he that can cause your flesh to die, but can cause your soul to perish. And that's what's going to happen to them. Uh, Mary from Indiana. Can a divorced, remarried person go to heaven? God is a God of forgiveness. Divorce and, and adultery is not the unpardonable sin. And when something is not the unpardonable sin, it means it can be forgiven. Okay. But that's up to, the, to he who forgives, and that's God. God has a tender, tender heart. God loves his children. And when you truly repent of any sin you might have caused or that was brought upon you, it might be somebody else's fault, you got nothing to worry about anyway, okay? If you truly understand law, but uh, God is God is a, a loving Father, and He's a forgiving Father. Uh, Bonnie from Georgia, tell me where we study when we study when you compared a man coming out of a spider hole with his hair matted up and fingernails grown out. And you compared this to Saddam Hussein. I was listening, but it has been, I, it, it, uh, I was, but it was so interesting it blowed my mind and I didn't mark it down. Well, let me give it to you again. Okay, Daniel chapter 4, verse 23. I'm sorry, verse 33. And, and it was Nebuchadnezzar. It was a type of the king of Babylon, which Saddam was. Iraq is the old Babylon of old. As a matter of fact, Saddam Hussein rebuilt the city Babylon uh, at one time. Had a musical festival there. Carolyn from Tennessee, I grew up in a family uh, on drugs and alcohol, and I have a bad drug problem. Is there any place in the Bible that would help me fight against um, th my problem, this battle? How can I rid the devil from my mind, body, and soul. Well, you anoint yourself and ask the Father to protect you. But let's, don't play games with God, though, if you, 
you got to want to. If you really want, ask him to give you the strength. And, and there are, uh, if you just can't cut it on your own, there are groups. The AA is a good place to start sometimes, okay? But, but uh, you can just on the word of asking him. He, he doesn't expect us to be in bondage. And when it is written in John chapter 8, verse, along about verse 32, that the truth will set you free, it, the truth will set you free from those bondages. If you learn the truth, and that takes a little time, you won't want anything to do with those things because what God has set aside for you is so very important that um, he, you have a destiny and a purpose. And all that does is let have Satan to destroy you. So you, you come out of it. God's a forgiving God. Ask him. Uh, Cara from California. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, can you explain if this has anything to do with the flyaway doctrine? Well, that's where basically it comes from. But what does it actually mean, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16? You've got to back up to 13 to get the subject. The subject being discussed in 16 is if you believe Christ rose from the dead, you've got to believe that those that have already died are with him. In other words, they've already gone. Therefore, fulfilling the dead in Christ rise first. That's the subject. They're gone. They're out of here. They're already with him. And... Um, it's not at some seventh trump or something like that. They're out of here. At the seventh trump, we're all changed. But the dead in Christ and the dead everywhere, to be absent from this body is present with him. They're with him already. That's why we that are alive and remain can't prevent them or precede them. Why? They're already, their boat already left. They're out of here. Um... This is Dennis from North Carolina, and you are so welcome. Could you explain 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 and 52, and how or if it relates to Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 20? Well, not, uh, not really. Um, I mean, they're both beautiful uh, statements, but um, they're not related to each other. Um, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52 is, is, is the last trump. That's the seventh trump. What happens at the seventh trump? Christ returns to this earth and establishes his kingdom. And we are all changed into spiritual bodies. But what it says in verse 52 and 53 is that some of us not only have our flesh bodies changed to spiritual bodies, but we have our mortal souls, that means liable to die souls, changed to immortal souls. Meaning we're, we, we take part in the first resurrection and overcome all the way. But some, even though the bodies change, still have a mortal soul, meaning they may go to hell. Okay. They've got the millennium to decide, and it's up to them. And in Ezekiel chapter 20, I'm sorry, in Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 20, it has to do with God is against those that teach his children to fly to save their souls rather than what the important part, back to verse 18 of that same chapter, they sow pillowcases to cover his outreach saving arms. He wants to save us. He doesn't want you to figure out some escape artist way to save your own soul. That's, that's the same thing that happened to the people that that created the Tower of Babel. They wanted, to, they wanted to raise above the flood so it couldn't destroy them, find their own way to salvation. God doesn't appreciate it. He wants to save us. And you can't blame him. He is our Father. Okay? So the two don't, they really have the, or according to, I mean, they have the same subject matter, but kind of different points. Uh, Karen from Texas uh, Jesus was flesh and bone after the resurrection, so will he be flesh and bone in the millennium? He's transfigured. Okay. Is it a different kind of flesh? I know it's a spiritual body. I just want to try to get more of a mental picture. Well, he was transfigured. Okay. R read Matthew chapter 11, where he took two or three and went up to the Mount of Transfiguration. It happened 
before the crucifixion so that people would know that his body was going to transfigure, that it wouldn't be left in the ground. Otherwise, people would say he had not defeated death. It had to be the transfiguration. So to document it, Moses and Elijah both appeared with him and, um, and uh, documenting the transfiguration. It's a spiritual body if you must, but uh, uh, yet at the same time, uh, Elijah never died, and I always teach Moses died, but God transfigured him also, I think. He wouldn't allow man to bury Moses. Deuteronomy, the last chapter. Uh, Andy from, uh, a question, where's Andy from? I don't know where Andy's from. Oh, Tennessee. I'm sure I've heard you say that Jesus became our Passover and Sabbath. I understand that he became the Passover sacrifice. No, he became our Passover. Have you never read 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 and 8? No ifs, no ends, no maybes. He became our Passover. He is our Passover. Passover up to that time was simply, and so it's the same way with the Sabbath. He became our Sabbath. What does Sabbath mean? It means rest. Christ is the only rest you're going to find on this earth, not some day of the week. And Hebrews chapter 4 documents that. He became those things, fulfilling the Ten Commandments. I'm out of time. Hey, you know what? I love you all because you enjoy studying our Father's Word, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Most of all, God loves you for it. When you make His day, He's going to make yours. Now, we brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we've helped you, you help us keep coming to you. Once you do that, you bless God. He will always bless you. But you know what's most important? You listen to me now. Most important, just stay in His Word. Every day in His Word, it's a good day, even with trouble. You know why? Jesus, Yeshua, Emmanuel is the living Word. Hearing God's Word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's Word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program, and God bless you.